So, with all that backtracking out of the way, we can finally head into brand new territory and see what's waiting for us inside the Kiryu household. Right off the bat, we are greeted by two vanishing ghosts. With the curious title given of Day's Doll. I wonder what that could mean. But there will be plenty of questions to answer as we head through the Kiryu household. We have gotten a few names of the more important families, but well, it'll be up to our exploration to shed some more light on each individual family. Don't kill me. In the case of the Kiryu household, it won't be too, too difficult to figure out just what the motif of this place will be. Though, such things as this large hole here, I don't think will ever truly be answered. It seems like someone here had something of a doll fetish. So yet again, much like the Kurosawa household, the Kiryu household has Wonderful, wonderful sound work, and I'll try not to step on that too much. But we do find some items here. Pretty, uh, pretty bog standard items. Type 14 and herbal medicine. Now, the Kiryu household is pretty expansive. It is much larger than the Osaka household. But for right now, we're going to have to follow a fairly linear path, as there are quite a few doors that are locked off to us. Doesn't hurt to explore around, though. Maybe get a feel for the environment and the surroundings. does definitely seem like that front room was in a better state than the rest of the house. Here we find some Type 61 film. And before we continue down the hallway here to the fork, we can actually enter this room here. Inside, we seem to have stumbled on the family altar room. Already we can see that there is an item waiting for us on the altar itself. And it's going to be our first note for the Kira house, Kiryu house, and it's very informative. So if we scan around, we can see what I'm assuming to be dead family members. I think it is a Japanese custom to line the altar room with deceased and honored members, but more importantly, that hole in the wall is somewhat important. If we go into viewfinder mode, it will give us a view of what is in that locked room next door. We see more dolls, here to be arms and legs might be something of a workshop. Hopefully we'll be able to explore that in a little bit, but outside of that, we do find a secreted away item, more herbal medicine, but otherwise that's all we can do in the family altar room for now.
we find ourselves in a much more pleasant looking room. Less downtrodden and broken apart. But the thing that kind of draws my attention most of all is that it seems like everything in this room comes in pairs. Perhaps that might go along with those child ghosts that we've been seeing running around, but it still kind of makes me question why it kept on referring to them as dolls. Seems they have left behind a gift for us this time around. It's another entry into their diary. And we see here that it seems that these two young girls were actually a part of a earlier ritual. And that one of them is dead. And that the father made a doll that is now possessed. Hmm. Maybe this radio crystal will shed some more light on that curious situation. I don't want to kill. I didn't want to kill anyone. I think I can completely understand not wanting to kill your twin. It also seems like Mayu's charm got an update, so let's give a quick listen to that. The ritual. One sister kills the other. So one half. The remaining. Now that's the first time we heard that term, the remaining, and we'll find out later that's actually for the twin that survives the ritual. The one that kind of houses the spirit of the dead twin. Kind of makes me wonder though why they would have to fear what the, what the village considers a god. Twins are no longer running, and now it's a it's our time to fight them. Why do you kill? Now, much like the child ghosts that we've played tag with before, these will these twins will attack us in tandem. Why do you kill? And the difficulty comes in the fact that, well, as you'll see, <laughs> didn't actually do any damage there. <laughs> now the reason that is, it's because. Well, as we already found out, only one of the twins was actually real. And in this case, the only one that will really do damage is the real one. And the difficulty comes in telling which one is which. Now, there are a number of tells to figure out which one is the real twin. I think the easiest one for me is to try to trigger the fatal frame, which is not that difficult. Ah! Only a real difficulty in this particular fight is the fact that you are giving a very, very, very small arena to fight in. Why did you kill The good news is that they don't have any additional attacks as far as I've been able to tell, and they don't do a terribly large amount of damage. But the real difficulty is 
mostly in the fact that if you do take the picture of the wrong twin, then you're just going to be wasting film as it will reset their attack pattern and you'll just have to hopefully wait for a chance to snap a picture of the real one. Took quite a bit of a beating during that fight, so we might as well use some of our massive glut of healing items. And I think that we have two different choices of direction here, but I think I'll go further up the hallway here. At this particular point in the Kiryu house, there's really not a wrong direction to take. Seems we've stumbled into something of a dull shrine. I can only assume that the father of the house must have had some special magical power powers with dolls to, bring, to be able to bring one of his his daughters back. Also, by taking a picture of this headless doll here, we get a picture of that altar room that we had just left. Maybe there was something that we were missing in there. It is a bit curious though that this doll seems to be missing its arms and uh, its head. And in the center there is a mechanism that currently does not function, so I'm getting the impression that we're going to have to do something of a fetch quest here. Here we actually find our first piece of information from the doll maker himself. His first attempts at uh, trying to make his, uh, his poor lonely daughter feel better. So by unlocking this door, we do find some connections to some places we have been previously. We have been in the projector room, but I think we should probably head into brand new areas rather than retreading the old. little nook here we do find another film reel. Probably look at that in just a little bit but well that breeze is coming through this lovely window here let's take a look out. Yeah those rambunctious kids just show up in the damnedest of places. Through that window, we could see another window across the way. It just leads into this pretty innocuous looking empty storage room. And in this room, we do find our hey there we do find our first save point of the house but we're not going to worry about that instead through this door we are going to find that we have made a complete circuit of the first floor so let's go see what's waiting for us in the altar room
This is why it was a good idea to notice that hole in the wall. like a man with a lot on his mind. But that sound also indicated to us the opening of the nearby door here. And considering we did see doll parts in here before, maybe some of the missing doll parts for that statue are awaiting in here. Seems like we have quite a selection, including some more Type 14 film. But I get a feeling that what we're looking for really isn't in here. We also see here that for some reason... the daughter was asking for the doll to be killed. Seems like maybe at some point the daughter had gotten wind that something might have been off with that doll. Well, let's hear from the doll maker. It's not a doll. It is not my child either. It is a ghost. I must kill it. Even if it looks like my child, I must kill it. The arms and head, eyes. Where did you hide them? Must have been a terribly difficult thing to to know that one of your daughters was doomed to die, only to bring her back as a monster that you were inevitably going to have to kill again. The thing is now that we still don't really know where the arms and head are. All we know is that there are some areas left of the house left to explore, so maybe some answers are waiting there. So we get a sneak ambush from the twins. This does allow for another interesting tale for which twin is the real one. <laughs> and in this case, well, the real one has the ability to fly. Yeah, that particular tell does not show up too often, but only the real twin is able to float and teleport in as much as that one is able to. But in the second floor hallway, with a little bit of intuition, we are able to find a hidden ghost among the rubble here. Now for the most part, we are only going to be learning about the, the head of the Kiryu household and his two daughters. But it does seem like with such a large house, there must have been other people living here at some point, though they're never fully gone into.
Even though, for all we know, the other denizens of the house could have just been more dolls. We did see an item hidden away over here in the corner. Lovely spirit orb. I think we've been getting enough points that we can probably fully upgrade our basic functions for the camera. Yeah, we have plenty of points. So in this room, in the little stand over here, is a hidden item. Stay with me. Yeah. Maybe all these things really aren't dull. Our viewfinder in heartbeat is going crazy, and that's because there is a hidden ghost here. And another mysterious member of the household. But there does seem to be something more waiting for us nearby. All we have to do is follow the pounding of the heartbeat. After we take that picture of Azami, she does leave behind our first piece of that missing doll. Along with another note from the doll maker, we see that he mistakenly overhears what he thinks to be his living daughter and instead finds the doll walking around of its own accord. Definitely seems pretty eerie, but. That is actually what we are going to be looking out for as we continue through the house. Azami, in her efforts to get rid of the doll, will be showing up in different areas, well, very specific areas, to lend us those missing pieces to hopefully finish off her... doppelganger doll sister? Not really sure how you'd refer to it, but that's where we found the, uh, I think, stun lens before. So that's just everything connecting together. But we have almost completely searched the house, or found all of its available areas to us. Stairwell is pretty much the last new area to explore. fuck was that? Why, it's a lovely brand new enemy. Say hello to what I guess you could call the broken neck woman's distant aunt, the fallen woman. She just loves to fall in on us at very inopportune times. Really though, she is not too difficult, as you can probably tell, she is extremely slow, though that may be a bit disconcerting when she does decide to lunge in for an attack. And you may have already noticed when her fatal frame moment is, but I am not that good at the game to be able to capture that. <laughs> So you can tell that even with her odd crab-like form, she does a tremendous amount of damage. And she is actually able to stun you if she does happen to drop nearby. I guess maybe it scares uh, Mio. 
<laughs> Otherwise, though, she really isn't that difficult and doesn't show up too much in the game. Which is probably for the best, because she scares the shit out of me. Yet again, still no idea if she is an, a member of the Kiryu household. Some random person that just happened to fall off the banister there. It's not overly explained, but we do find a, another film reel here. And with a little bit of investigation in the little grandfather clock here, we do find another radio stone. assume that was the fallen woman's attempts to escape the darkness, but, well, man was never meant to fly on its own. But as I mentioned before, this stairwell here is our last new area to explore in the house, so that does leave into question where the other parts of the doll could be. But for those that might recall, I did point out a seemingly innocuous storeroom in that hallway where we first fought the twins, and that is going to be where we are heading next. I suppose for someone being their first time through, this particular part can be a bit of an annoyance considering they don't really give it a hint as where to go, but in all reality, the Kiryu house isn't really that big. It's definitely not as big as the Kurosawa house. Kill me. We get that lovely, lovely doll head and... Another note from the doll maker. And here we see his first efforts to try to cull his poor, poor daughter's loneliness by making her a brand new sister. And kind of lamenting the fact that there's a ritual at all. Completely understandable, I mean, yet again he had to deal with the death of his daughter and the foreknowledge that even if it's closing the doors of hell, it's someone very close to him. So now comes the troublesome body part to find. And... Well, I think before we go pick that up, since we are going to be passing right by the projector room, seems like a good time to have a little bit of a uh, trip to the movies and see just what is waiting for us on these film reels.
very informative. Still kind of wonder who is filming these things in the first place. I don't assume it to be the folklorist, considering he seemed to be strung up there. That one gives me a dread sense of unease. Seems... Seems that might be the inevitable place we might be heading. But... You, you may not recall, since I didn't point it out earlier, but there is a little storeroom over here. we receive our final doll piece along with the final violet diary and it shows here that it definitely wasn't Akane that came back in that doll instead it was taking on her personality and some means to twist Azami especially with the I think it was getting the the definite feeling that it was in trouble from the the doll maker that it was probably going to be destroyed so what better means to protect itself than to manipulate the other young girl into protecting it but hopefully by popping these all in place we can leave this disturbing household behind, but sadly it seems to still be lacking that something special. And the only place that kind of springs to mind as where we could investigate next is maybe we miss something in the, uh, the doll maker's room. seems that we have. Something is causing our camera to react. We get some glimpse into the choking ritual itself. But more importantly, amongst the ashes we do find some brand new documents listing the fact that I think it might have been mentioned in the uh, the Dollmaker's Radio Stone, but we apparently need to find the eyes for the head. Just the head alone isn't enough. We also get here a hint for a puzzle for later on, but still kind of wonder where the eyes are, but that's answered soon enough, as it seems like the Dollmaker decided to keep the eyes for himself. Still makes me wonder where the doll maker is. Then no, in case you're wondering, we can't use those eyes. Still though, I guess that means we're gonna have to explore a little bit more to figure out where the doll maker is. Though it doesn't seem we have to explore too, too far. And say hello to the doll maker himself. Now, he is a particularly interesting little fight. He starts off fairly passive. 
doesn't seem to be attacking us, just kind of, I don't know, maybe measuring us up or stricken by his own grief. Never really seemed to come across in his writings as being too aggressive. But after he teleports around a bit, he does decide to finally pull out his real attack. And in keeping with the themes we have seen before, he sends a pair of flying dolls to attack us. Now we can just continue to do little bits of damage to him, but what we actually want to do is to catch him in a zero shot, which will cause the dolls to get knocked down. Or if the dolls are causing too much of an issue, we can attack them directly, that will cause them to knock down, but in all honesty, that's pretty much a massive waste of film. And if you're wondering what his fatal frame moment is, he does have an additional attack where he will walk towards you very, very slowly, but he doesn't really seem to do that attack that often. He mostly just chooses to teleport around and summon up the dolls. Overall, I'd say this is an extremely easy fight, and especially in comparison to the trouble that you can have with the twins. But in the end, I mostly just feel bad. He honestly had to go through just so much. For our troubles, we do get the eyes and a final note from the doll maker himself. He goes a bit into how he was going to end up destroying the evil possessed doll and his own torment with having to perform the ritual again, even if it is on a possessed demon doll. In addition to that, we also find a brand new piece of equipment for the camera. And this one can be particularly useful, especially for later on, but this allows us to equip up to three power-up lenses at one time, and we can switch between them as much as we want without having to go into the pause menu. And that would be extremely useful if we had any more useful power-up lenses, but we will be getting some later on. But for right now, it's back to the doll room to hopefully get the hell out of here. So, with popping the eyes in, it does activate the mechanism here in the center. And this isn't too, too difficult of a puzzle to figure out. The only thing to keep in mind is that even though it doesn't tell you, you only have six turns to make before you reset the puzzle. But it's simple enough solution. The only problem is, after you do solve the puzzle, we do have one final encounter here with the twins. And the only real difficulty here is that they have a little bit more health than they had before. Otherwise, we have plenty of room to maneuver around in, and honestly, at this point, you've probably had a few opportunities to fight them and hopefully get down a few more of their tells. Now, some of the other means to be able to tell which one is which is the fake doll, or the fake twin, as it is moving towards you, will actually make a rattling wooden sound. And it has a slightly different timbre of voice. In addition to that, only only the real twin has a real face, even though that's a bit hard to tell, but 
We do get a radio stone for our effort. But more importantly, it does open up the mechanism. So before I head down the ladder, see what is waiting for us, let's go ahead and see what's waiting for this other stone. can only assume that's the possessed doll trying to work on the guilt of the other sister after having had to kill her real sister. But let's go ahead and get out of this horrible dollhouse and finally make our way towards Mayu. So much like under the Osaka house, we find ourselves yet again in a rocky cavern. what appears to be a connecting tunnel way. And among these rocks, we find an easily missed radio stone here. So, since we do have a bit of a reprieve, we might as well give that a listen. These radio stones really give you the feeling that the darkness is more than just the absence of light, that it's, it's almost something of a brute force. With nothing standing in our way, let's venture down the Earth Bridge and catch up with our sister. What a wonderful way to start a chapter. See you next time.